Well, welcome uh, to our Wednesday night study. Pastor Mike and I are going to be leading this together, and we're talking today about the parable of the Good Samaritan. So we're going to start by reading it, and then we want to share with you a few of our thoughts on this particular parable. From Luke 10, beginning with verse 25. On one occasion, an expert in the law stood up to test Jesus. Teacher, he asked, what must I do to inherit eternal life? What is written in the law, Jesus replied. How do you read it? And he answered, Love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your strength and with all your mind, and love your neighbor as yourself. You've answered correctly, Jesus replied. Do this and you will live. But he wanted to justify himself, so he asked Jesus, And who is my neighbor? Jesus replied, A man was going down from Jerusalem to Jericho and fell into the hands of robbers, who stripped him, beat him, and went away, leaving him half dead. Now by chance, a priest was going down that road, and when he saw him, he passed by on the other side. So likewise, a Levite, when he came to the place and saw him, passed by on the other side. But a Samaritan, while traveling, came near him, and when he saw him, he was moved with pity. And he went to him and bandaged his wounds, having poured oil and wine on them. And he put, up, he put, up, he put him on his own animal, and he bought him at an inn, and he took care of him. The next day, he took two denarii and gave them to the innkeeper and said, Take care of him. When I come back, I will repay you whatever more you spend. Which of these three do you think was the neighbor to the man who fell into the hands of robbers? He said, The one who showed him mercy. Jesus said to him, Go and do likewise. I'm curious why this parable is sticking out for you this morning. Like, What is it about this parable that's, that's catching your eye? Well, there are a couple of things. The first is, Jesus really doesn't ask, answer the question. Because if he answered the question, he would have said, well, everyone. Mm -hmm. But that would have left the reality uh, defined by the expert in the law. What Jesus does is, in my estimation, present a new picture of reality. The picture of the kingdom is not what I'm asking who will be a neighbor to me or who is like me but rather to whom should I be a neighbor and what does that look like? And Jesus revisions reality from the kingdom perspective. And I've been thinking a lot about that in terms of where we are right now culturally. Hmm. What is the new vision for reality on the other side of justice that is equal for all people? No. You used a word there that I want to spend a little time with before we get too far, which is kingdom. When you say kingdom, I think of something really particular. I think of, like, the queen and the guards. But when you talk about the kingdom of God, what are you picturing? Like, what is, what is that call to mind for you? It calls to mind wherever and whenever the values of God mm. are present. That the kingdom is within us, and the kingdom is outside of us. But you had a text um, not long ago where Jesus said the Holy Spirit will be in you and then through you. Mm -hmm. I think the kingdom values are those things that we have learned through faith and are still learning, and then reflect into the world. So wherever those kingdom values happen, and I see the parable of the Good Samaritan as one of those moments where Jesus says, ah, you'll know the kingdom when it looks like this. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So and that I, catches you about this parable. Well, and I love what you say about values because it's not hard to watch the news right now. It's not hard to hear what people are saying um, in our communities, what people, friends of mine are talking about as they're talking about some of um, the in injustice that's gone on in our community. I. I've been on a learning quest the last couple of weeks. I've been learning some of um, the history of how we got to 2020, um, the history. I, I'm a history teacher by nature, and so this is embarrassing for me to learn about the election of 1876, to learn about, um, to learn about redlining in Des Moines and reading some of those things. And that's why I think this, this strikes me so quickly is because um, the values that I have, both as an American, of individual freedom and fair play, and the values that I have as a follower of Jesus, of the world is a just place, and God continues um, 
to work on, on, on for the good of those who love him. And we're called to do the same thing, to bring that kingdom to earth, bring those values to earth, always surprises me. Um, now the question you asked, that was a long intro to get to the question you asked. It's one of my skills. Um, is um, what strikes me is who the hero of the story is. Yeah. Because you have this Samaritan, and I think we consistently look at the Bible and we assume we know who are the good people and who are the bad people? Who are the ones who are working on behalf of the church and the world and the ones who we don't really know them and so we don't know what's going on? But I, I, I never forget that the Samaritan would have been represented somebody that most of the hearers had never met, had never talked to, had never spent any significant time with. They were just the ones that we were taught, you know, they're on the other side. They, we don't... We don't necessarily associate with them. Yeah. Yeah. And Jesus pulls them front and center and says, okay, this Samaritan is the one who's going to make the difference. Yeah. I don't know. I always, I always get into church and I think the heroes are going to be the pastors and the council members and the leaders. So yeah. Yeah. That's just not the case in this story. It's very interesting because in Hebrew culture, um, Luke quite rightly says that in fact the man asks who is my neighbor as a way of justifying himself because Torah, the law within the Old Testament, identifies who the neighbor is. The neighbor is the fellow Jew. The neighbor is the person like you. Mm -hmm. And Jesus wants to say that's not kingdom thinking. Mm -hmm. Kingdom thinking is the, the neighbor is the one to whom I will care, give care. Um, so I think the question I would like to raise for all of us is, what are the pictures that we have seen that are like the Good Samaritan story? Okay. The pictures in reality um, that are revisioning the future for us. Have you seen any of those? I have. Yeah. Tell me about it. As a person who lived through the civil rights movement as a child, and then an early teenager, and then the Vietnam War fiasco, when people were at least divided as much as they are today, if not more so, mm -hmm. the reality is it was, would have been impossible to imagine police officers kneeling mm. with protesters. Mm -hmm. It would have been impossible to see people of power like a police chief mm -hmm. take off his riot gear and being very vulnerable enter into a crowd mm -hmm. to walk with them. Mm -hmm. It would have been very difficult to imagine a great African-American preacher like Al Sharpton who said at the eulogy for George Floyd, we're not anti-anyone. We just don't want people to be anti-us and reframing the world. Um, so I've seen glimpses of it, and it's like Jesus here, when he revisions the future for us, mm -hmm. it's not a done deal, is it? Mm -hmm. It's an invitation to work toward that, to live toward that. Now, my question to you is, have you seen pictures of that? Have, do you have ideas of how to work toward it? Yeah. Um, I keep thinking of our friend, uh, Al Womble, who yeah. is part of this congregation and who has done so much work in the community in order to try to bring people together and, and cross boundaries. And um, I often, this is where I, I get to admit my ignorance, I was shocked to turn on the TV one night and see him in front of, I mean, I knew Al from here. I was, I was like, too. I was there's too. Al, that's yeah. what's going on. And, um, and, and to see that picture and to have those conversations and say, we're talking about, um, we're talking about not just being mad at people, but we're talking about what does it look like to deal with the systems that underlie everything that we see? And 
and to have to, to have to enter into a conversation that doesn't say, well, this is either you're you're good and you're not racist or you're bad and you're racist, but to say, we actually live in a system that's all baked into it and and the only way to continue to make our way forward is to cross those lines, to step across what we think is the boundary. Um, I get so frustrated in our culture because we do we play this either or game, either on this side yeah. or that side. Yeah. Yeah. And and what I love about what Jesus says here is he says it's not either or. It's who's going to make the first move to begin to tear down walls and who's going to stand there when the other person is still looking at them going, I'm not sure I trust you. What I love about Jesus' story is when the Samaritan brings that um, person to the hotel or to the hospital or whatever it is in order to be cared for, I would really imagine that the people who were um, around the Samaritan were going, well, we don't trust you. We don't, we don't think that you're going to do the right thing. And he has to, in the middle of all of that distrust, continue to say, no, I'm here, and I'm here to help, and I'm going to make a difference. And, and that's what I'm starting to see pictures of in our culture, yeah. is people who are saying, I'm going to stay in this conversation, even though you might not trust that I'm going to be here. I think you bring out something really wonderful. Mm -hmm. The Samaritan acted with vulnerability. Mm -hmm. He acted with vulnerability when he stopped to help a Jewish man and bind up his wounds, then walking into a Jewish inn mm -hmm. or hospital, or how we understand that, he was vulnerable for the sake of caring for others. Let me give you just a couple of other pictures I think of it. Yeah. Um, a police officer responded to the request of a police officer in trouble because uh, the protesters had gathered around the police officer's car and he was fearful for his life. Mm -hmm. uh, the police officer drove to, got out of the car because he couldn't get close to his colleague to help him. And as he's walking, the protests continue. He backs up against a pizza place. And that's when it happened because people from the crowd, African American people, gathered as a human wall to protect that white police officer, mm -hmm. who now has publicly thanked them. By the way, the pizza owner of the pizza house mm -hmm. has said, when you come back to thank those folks, I'll buy the pizza. <laughs> there is something incredibly powerful about being vulnerable for the sake of doing justice. Mm -hmm. And I think whenever you see that, however it happens, mm -hmm. that's the Holy Spirit. That's mm -hmm. the kingdom. And I love what you said. It's, it's, isn't it amazing how Jesus rarely addresses issues in terms of either or? Over and over again, it's mm -hmm. both ends. And so he doesn't discount uh, the expert in the law. Mm -mm. After telling the parable, he says, go and do likewise. See yourself in this. How do you yeah. do this? Yeah. Yeah. And so we need to ask ourselves, I think, where do we fit into this? Oh, good. Where do we begin to live like the Samaritan? Where do we begin to see ourselves not as honored, but as blessing others. Yeah. Because that's the difference in the story. You've got these two people who the community said, they're leaders. They're, they're people who deserve your respect and you should defer to them. And then you have this person who people said don't deserve Absolutely. your respect. Yeah. Yeah. And he says, live like the ones who live in the shadows but make a difference for other people. And I'm, I'm so thankful for this season for people who are doing that. Um, and you've talked you talked at length about the difference you've seen in police officers, having seen years of history. I continue to see that um, in people who are younger than me, who are in their 20s, who are suddenly, um, maybe not suddenly, but have been finding their voice on these issues. Yeah. Does it always, is it always perfect? No. no. But it's, it's amazing to see that for every one person who's going, you know, I'm just, 
angry and I'm not sure what to do with it. You have many more who are showing up and saying, we need to change the system because our kids don't deserve to live the way the, in the system that we're living in. And my, my mom had this say, always leave it better than you found it. Yes. And I think sometimes we forget that as a society, that our goal is to leave the world better than we found it. And part of that means saying that 20 or 30 years from now, these discussions are no longer, we're no longer talking about economic disparity. We're no longer talking about that if you're an African-American family in Iowa, you make $29,000 less than a white family. Yeah. That, yeah. That's a big disparity. Yeah. And we're asking these questions, well, what do we do about it? I think the first thing we do is we begin to say, well, what's the system behind that? Um, yeah. One of the things, words you use that I really like is system. Mm -hmm. Over and over again, you mentioned systems. Mm -hmm. When I go back to the parable of the Good Samaritan, what's fascinating to me mm -hmm. is that Jesus undoes the system that actually shapes the worldview of the expert of the law. Mm -hmm. And he says, literally, your legal system, your understanding of Torah is no longer functional. Mm -hmm. There is a new way of seeing. Mm -hmm. And that's scary. Mm -hmm. That's scary. And in fact, we know that's one of the reasons that ultimately Jesus is crucified. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So the question before all of us is, can we set aside our anxieties and our defensiveness in order to ask the question, what are the, the systems, the policies and procedures that we assume that need to be changed? Mm -hmm. And then we have to try things. What's the old, the, old, the old saying, done is better than good? Yeah. Sometimes we have to try something and see if it works. We can't wait. There's, there's no perfect solution to this. We've been talking about injustice for 2,000 years. Yep. The question is, what does injustice look like in our own lives? That's right. And how do we begin to say, okay, I can take a step. We can take a step. We as a society can take a step to make a difference. And that's, that's the hope that I'm seeing right now. Yes. And that's what I'm hoping we'll continue to talk about because God is not shy about his desire for justice for his people. That's right. And that leads, I think, to the last piece of the parable that really jumps out at me during this time. Mm -hmm. The Good Samaritan did not simply care for the immediate needs of that man. Mm -hmm. He made provision mm -hmm. for his long-term health. Mm -hmm. And I think for us as Christians, Caring for the immediate need of someone is very important, mm -hmm. but making provision for long-term health and well-being for all people is simply living out the teaching of Jesus. I think we should stop there. I agree. Uh, you know, thanks for joining us. Uh, we're going to be here for the next couple of weeks. We're going to tackle some scriptures together and see what, what can we learn from them as we grow and as we lean into growing in faith, sharing Jesus, and serving others. See you soon. See you soon.